Four times John Tafford walked out. Now y'all know I love walking out. <laughs> I get up on this YouTube channel and walk out all the time. But I also walk out on reality TV shows. Whether I'm being fired, shut up, or I'm just having a hissy fit, <laughs> which happens a lot. When it comes to bars now, there's only a few reasons I walk out. For example, if it's too packed and there's nowhere to sit, I'm in my 30s now, love to sit. Everyone's like, Mike, come dance. And I'm like, I'm not on drugs anymore. I wanna sit. <laughs> If the music is too loud or it's circuity like the fucking Abbey, it's like, ns, ns, ns. come to the bathroom. Ns, ns, ns. Can I get an orange juice? If the vibe isn't right and I could tell like I don't belong there, like a college bar, never, never. My friends and I tried to do that recently. We went to a bar that we used to go to in college and it was just full of young kids. And I'm an old man now, okay? My pussy can't hang because my tits are. Bitch, I was home in bed by 11. <laughs> I'm retired. And we've seen crazy shit happen on Bar Rescue. There's a, a fucking horse that took a shit on the floor. There was a rat in the frying machine. So I want to know what could have possibly happened that made John Tafford say, you know what? Fuck this shit. And honestly, I'm really excited to find out. So let's check out why John Tafford walked out of a bar on four separate occasions. John, my God. How are you? You're drunk, aren't you? No, not at all. Why lie? Why lie? How are people that, first of all, how are you that fucking bad at hiding being drunk? I had been drunk and under the influence of several different substances for years. <laughs> and no one knew, especially growing up. That shit was bad. Either I was really good at hiding it or my parents sucked. <laughs> and people like this piss me off because I will always stand for people having a few cocktails when you're working at a bar, but only if you can control yourself. This person obviously can't control himself. He's got bigger issues. So he shouldn't be in a bar, period, let alone owning one. I can tell by the way he's acting. I can smell it from here. My issue is, I can't endorse you. You will suck the life out of everything. Okay. <laughs> That's what gets people young in West Hollywood. Wanna know why all the daddies in West Hollywood look so young? Because they suck in the youth out of the twigs. <laughs> I wanted the knowledge. I'm a smart businessman. I want to know how to run 36 bars from a ship in Costa Rica or something. There's your bar. First of all, <laughs> first of all, you can't be a hot mess express and run a successful business. That's one thing we've learned from Mohan Beach Club. <laughs> I got it out of the way, stop. And you wanna run 36 bars from a boat in Costa Rica, how about fixing the one you have first, okay? How about fixing is, mama, let's start with you first, okay? Let's get you together before we focus on anything else. Run it, take the signs down, change the name, do whatever you want, I'm leaving. Tell him what you want to do, guys. I good quit. Moment. Good luck. Yeah, good. See you. There's a Dunkin' Donuts across the street, and honestly, that looks more fun. Like, let's all go to get. Let's all go get a fucking. What is it called? A munchkin. I'm down. You know you got a fucking problem when I'm more interested in going to the fucking Dunkin' Donuts across the street than your bar. Honestly. You, you're gone too. So we don't have a grand opening. You do. Where's the Lila, man? Where's the Lila? She's not here. <laughs> not here! You know where you are? <laughs> God, it's like talking to a parent with Alzheimer's. That's how emotional this scene seems to be. This man doesn't even know where he is. Like, what's going on? And this is the grand opening night of his bar. This is your grand opening. And you show up so fucked up, you don't even know what's going on to the point where you're so numb, you don't care that your whole staff just quit? What about you, Jess? Oh, I plan on moving on. Where's my crew? You guys coming into the dugout? Free admission. Buy your drinks all night long. First of all, I'm gonna skip the whole part of the problem with the bar being called the fucking dugout, a fucking dirt hole at a baseball game, and baseball fucking suck. But this is your opening night. Please come into my bar. Oh, please. Hold on, hold on. Please come into my bar. Oh, please. Oh, my. First of all, my titties look great. Please come into my bar. I'll buy you free drinks. No. One thing people could smell is desperation. Life advice from Mike, don't ever let anyone know you're desperate, even if you are. Let's go. Don't give any money to that man. I'm not a donkey to smile for Terry. I like how he's like, let's go. No one follows. And this motherfucker is still talking like it's not his fault. I love the vines, man. John, good job with the vines. The bar looks awesome. A beautiful makeover that you could get from a 
interior designer. A bar could have a great vibe and look amazing, but if the owner is a sloppy mess, it's not gonna work. We learned that from Wilhelm Bishop and did it again. Shut up. I don't quit jobs. I can't afford to. But I'm not gonna go work for someone who's that drunk. Me when daddy comes home after a few too many. <laughs> Ugh, I don't quit jobs. I can't afford to. Honestly, my Tinder bio. He can go f himself. Felt like I was jumping through f hoops like a pony in a f dog show. And he poisoned my staff against me. This is a co common case of it's everyone else's fault but mine. Everyone else is wrong and I'm right. <laughs> Which is never the case. Everyone, look, look at me right now. If everyone seems to tell you that you're fucking up, you're fucking up. So be it for Smiling Ed. I tried everything I could with Ed. His name is Smiling Ed? For a man who pisses everybody off and causes a lot of frowning and isn't smiling much himself, his name is Smiling Ed. Fact of the matter is every failing bar has a failing owner. I can't help someone who won't help themselves. Tables look nice, bar stools look nice. Dude, look, look, take me out to a ball game. That looks cool. And it's a baseball bar. Oh God, this place needs help. This baseball sucks. It does. It does. It does. And it's not just because I'm a homosexual. Baseball fucking sucks. It's a step above fishing and golf. Don't even get me started. John, I love you. I wanted to work with you, man. Just can't see eye to eye. And you know what else pisses me off? Your shirt is too big. Straight men, stop. Your shirt is too big. You look like a fucking idiot. You look like a fucking Italian woman wearing a house coat in her 60s. Figure your shit out. We gotta start with this man first. Okay, I'm not even commenting on the bar because we gotta fix him first. Here's the deal. I'm gonna put an additional $100,000 in your bar on top of what I've done. But I will only do it if you put in 30,000. Did you just see all those, the whole wait staff with all their tits out and they're having problems making money? Bitch, what? And none of them seemed excited about him just offering them $100,000 and all they gotta do is put 30 grand down. He's offering you over three times your investment and none of them were jumping for joy. I'd be sucking that dick so hard right now. Are you out of your damn mind? You write a check for me for $30,000 and I remodel your bar. If you don't commit, then I won't. That is such a reasonable ask in business because you can't just put nothing down. People in business today want to put nothing down, but you need to have something on the line because it keeps you what? Accountable, especially if someone's offering you over three times your investment. And especially if John Tafford's in the business, you're going to make an ROI, a return on investment. That's the deal. I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. In the world of business, when partners work together, asking him to put a few dollars in is very consistent with business practices. I want him motivated to keep the programs in place and fight for the success of his business. Exactly, because why would he if he has nothing on the line? He's obviously a lazy piece of shit because he's got a failing bar. And again, his shirt's too big. What is it with these men who don't know how to run a business with the shirts being too big? Stop! This is such a fair, this is such a nice business offer. He's being more than reasonable. You ain't gonna get that shit on Shark Tank. I do believe if he does the remodel, we implement everything he's saying, I'll be able to do that. I've been giving Terry chance after chance for the past two days, really the past two years. Now it's D-Day. He needs to step up and prove himself or I'm not gonna rescue this bar. Why would you? Why would you? Because if you're not willing to invest in the bar, then why would anybody be willing to invest in you? Investors aren't really always investing in the product themselves. They're investing in the creator, in the person behind it, in the businessman. You need to be motivated. We need to know that you have passion, that you want this. Oh God, business Michael is coming out. Y'all about to see that master degree, bitch. Fuck. And write you a chart. Better won't be any good. So you, you, you can't, you I don't, don't have the money. So you find the money. You find the money. If this is a business. If you have the capital to open and run a bar, $30,000 is nothing. It is nothing. Especially getting the marketing you're from, not only from being on the show, but from John Tafford himself. Because a basic marketing plan, unless you're an influencer who gets all your marketing for free by dancing on TikTok, a basic small package marketing plan is $10,000 plus. I work for companies that have 
over $300,000 invested in that f fucking marketing plan. Jinx Monsoon has to give all her winnings for that shit. And you guys want to complain about $30,000? I know people are sitting here in the comments being like, Michael, $30,000 is a lot of money. You're damn right it's a lot of money. But in business, it's not a big ask. It's really, really not. Especially when someone's also putting in $100,000 on top of it. You're gonna make an ROI. Because if you don't believe enough in your business to invest in it, then why would anybody else invest their time in it? If you don't love yourself, why is anybody gonna love you, bitch? The fuck? Shit, you guys are gonna find out that I actually know what I'm talking about. Let me make myself stupid and relatable again. I don't know science. I'm not a cosmetologist. Nah. If he's gonna do what he's doing for me, I'm gonna reinvest too. I'm gonna make for the effort. You're talking about how successful his other bar is, right? And the other bars um, pay for my bills. And that's so what I love. Now about. the other bar is not so successful, right? Yeah. This guy is so full. Of it's unbelievable. So successful. Do you believe? If your other bars are so successful, then why are we here? If your other bars are so fucking successful, why do you need John Taffet's big ass coming and saving your current bar? If you knew what you were doing. You can't make money at a bar where all the girls have their tits out. And I support that. Free that nipple, bitch. You better slap that titty on that bar. But if you still can't get people to come in, there is a problem, my guy. And I have an inkling that it's the fact that you don't have confidence in the success of the bar or yourself for that matter. Do you believe that he can't come up with this money? No. You got that whole staff of girls that one of them I'm sure is willing to open an OnlyFans that you can promote and make the money. There's ways to do it. You don't want to know what I did to get my first camera to start this YouTube channel, bitch. We're not even going to go there. Sell pictures of your feet, fart in a jar, figure it the fuck out. We learned during the pandemic, Lovato, that there was a way to make money, no matter when you thought that there wasn't. I don't want to hear that you can't figure it the fuck out if you're a business owner. There is certain situations where coming up with, with money is tough. I understand money problems. I understand it. But from a business perspective, why are you wasting someone's time having them coming in and offering you a chance, offering you a larger investment? That's the problem. See, this is business now. We're not talking about personal money problems. Let's get out of here, guys. It's over. Because I don't trust you. Because you are a slime bucket. It's one of the best concepts I've ever done, and he totally f***ed it up. If I had the money, I would do it. Let's go, guys. Take out a loan. I've seen bar owners open up a second mortgage, a third mortgage. I don't even know if it's possible, but I think they've done it. But let's take social media out of it. Let's say I'm like the average Joe. Because when I was moving out to Los Angeles, I needed to raise about $30,000 before I was comfortable to move it on my own. So for a year, I worked three service industry jobs. Busted my ass, never slept, don't ask me how, but I never slept, and hustled to the nines, saved my ass off, and I made about $28,000 in a year. And that's what a 22 year old with no experience did back then. So you wanna sit here as an adult man with several successful businesses and tell me that you can't come up with the fucking money? Go fuck yourself. For that deal, I would've been munching box at the local retirement home to get John Taffer whatever the fuck he asked for. Why are you so negative? I just, you know, I think we're, we're on a little bit different pages, you know? I'm here to help your bar, and you have been nothing but an the whole time I've been here. Why? I want the help. I mean, you want well, me to want do help. what you want me to do. I know you think you- Okay, this is my problem. My problem, ah! these men, these toxic masculinity men are having John come in and save your bar and telling you what to do. And they're so fucking fragile that they refuse to show any weakness or vulnerability and can't accept help. So they are just fighting back, trying to say that they know what they're talking about, trying to prove that they're right when their business is failing because of it. So if that's the result you want, then why the fuck am I even here? My biggest pet peeve is when my time is not appreciated or wasted. And that's gonna set me off, mama. I mean, you want well, I me to want do help. what you want me to do. I know you think you know where you're at, but the whole you brought little fruit drinks and we needed a kitchen, but instead, I think it's just gonna be some Fruit Loop bar. My neighbors are gonna be pissed. But it was worth it because we're complaining about fruity cocktails being implemented in the bar because you don't want it to be too Fruit Loopy. Oh, the toxic masculinity popped out. The homophobia is showing, bitch. These men are so fucking afraid to show femininity that they would rather have their business fail. You pussy ass bitch. You can't manage a cocktail. How are you gonna manage a kitchen, Dave? I was hoping for the best. We do need a kitchen. That's a huge deal. But this man who can't even make a cocktail is gonna talk shit about what, well, hold on, I bet you, I bet you he's got nothing but draft beer 
and some shitty whiskey on the shelves. Bitch, I bet you that's all they fucking serve here. And that's just so weak. That is so weak that some men can't even handle serving, not even having, but serving fruity cocktails because they might seem fruity. Are you fucking kidding me? Have you ever, imagine a gay man being afraid to have a fucking stout. Like, are you out of your damn mind, you fucking pussy bitch? I would have done a little bit more paperwork on the block you're sitting on. Oh, really? You know better than I. I know those fruit drinks ain't gonna fly over there. What? Why is this, why is this such a big deal? Why are the fruit drinks such a big deal? Why is this what's stopping you from having a successful bar? The fact that you can't handle a fucking fruit cocktail? The fucking, a Cosmo pisses you off that bad. A Cosmo pisses you off that bad. Sir, put it in a douche and shove it up your ass. I'm out. I need my Willem candle right now because your tone seems very pointed. This man needs all the help he can get. Nurse! <laughs> Nurse! What are you talking about? You are so negative, you can't see anything positive. This is what it is. You've taken investor money from your friend Gabe. You're in Gail? His friend Gail? Mama. Mama. The call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> You've taken investor money from your friend Gabe. You're in debt $160,000. You're two months from closing, and you're standing there telling me what I should do. You know what bars aren't that in debt and about to close? The gay ones serving the fruity drinks, bitch. Why not implement a fucking drag show on Sunday, you fucking bitch? You such a bitch. Let me talk to him. I just want to talk. I, you know what? I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave. The problem's not when I leave. The, with me, the problem's when I decide to stay. <laughs> I just want to talk. If you think my dangly earring is bad, wait till I dangle my nuts in your face. And you stand there cocky. I don't get it, man. Do you understand that that attitude will make you fail? Not you see, to fail. punks have an edge, but they're not. You know, you can't come out here and just talk down on me like I'm some scumbag. So weak. You are so weak. You can't be, you can't handle constructive criticism. And he's telling you the truth. He's giving you the hard truth and your shirt doesn't fit right. Oh my God, that straight man personality where I'm gonna show no emotion because that shows weakness and I can't show any vulnerability because that's fruity. And I can't even serve a fruity fucking cocktail because God forbid any of the boys talk about it. Weak, weak, weak. You know, you can't come out here and just talk down on me like I'm some scumbag. Go home. We don't want you here anyways. Oh, really? Here's my view. You think I'm- He didn't say that to John's face. That's a Frankenstein cut. Uh-uh, I can tell that. On several reality shows I've done, they will call you. Production has called me while they were editing the show months after we filmed it and say, hey, Mike, we want to just like implement this line that you said. Can you send us a voice note on your phone and then they just put it in the show? It's that janky. I'm not even kidding you. That's how TV is made. And you can obviously tell because the sound is different. And this man hasn't had the balls to say anything to John's face when the camera's pointed at him. So when it's pointing away, he just magically gets the cojones. Mm, I don't believe it, bitch. Don't believe it. And you know why you're the idiot? Because it's on you. Because your ego will destroy anything. Well, go back to the airport and fly the f out of here. Do you see what I'm talking about? He didn't say that to his face. He didn't say anything to his face because he's a pussy. Because he's a pussy. Because production called him months later and then he had the balls to say it when John wasn't there. He's a pussy. Good luck on your corner. <laughs> you know, if John said that to me, it would have a completely different meaning, but I'm just gonna let that slide because ow! And honestly, I would have great luck on my corner. I'd, I'd make that 30 grand, I'll tell you that right now. My business background check has found police reports that verify the criminal offenses at O-Face. August 16th. The criminal offenses at O-Face. The bar is called O-Face? I have to go. August 20th, pub criminal offenses at O-Face. August 16th, fourth degree criminal misconduct. August 20th, public intoxication, disorderly conduct, and interference with police official acts. And in addition to that, I found something that completely changes the game here. Oh my God, what was it? <laughs> Were they mixing bottles? Were they putting cheap vodka in the expensive vodka bottles? <laughs> Cause that happens. You know guys, I've been working really hard the past two days to come up with a concept and a plan to make you guys successful. The first day I got here, I never even made it inside the bar. 
I got involved in a fight in a parking lot where your manager was fighting with you, Sarissa. At the end of that fight. Iconic, where's that reality show? <laughs> a reality show called The O-Face, I see it now. Because that shit only happens on reality, that, only, that can only be tolerated on reality shows at a real business never! Physical fighting, you're fired! <laughs> what? And the manager was fight, the manager? Hold on. And why was I on the ground? Teresa, you and ask I... for it all the time. And then I saw a video a few minutes ago that took me over the top. And I want an answer to this. Oh my God, he's edging us. What is it? I'm gonna pee my pan. Matt, Dave, please explain this. You think I'm f playing with you? I don't you? Once got her. Military mother I don't I will take you out. You ever I don't got her mouth at all. I fuck you. You understand yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Military mother He threw it and ran. Hold on. <laughs> like none of that was okay. That's assault. But like, <laughs> I love how he just like threw the pot and got the fuck out of there. But that's the owner. That's the owner getting in a physical fight outside of the bar in a shitty location on top of that. The only time it has ever been appropriate for someone to hit another person in a bar is when Stassi busted open Kristen's lip on Vanderpump Rules and y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about because that was iconic. Either you put him through a window or I'm gonna put him through a window. I own the bar, so I prefer it was you. You don't pay me enough, man, to put him through a window. You get a $10 raise an hour. You get it. I like how that guy's like across the street antagonizing them still when his pussy ass just ran away. Y'all mix miss that? I can give two about what they're talking about right now. Your bar isn't what's wrong. Your character is what's wrong. I've aired out my differences with all these people. I've talked. I've discussed with you. You didn't air it out, bitch. You hit them. You hit them. Workers. Where's workers cop? Where is? Hold on. I'm calling human resources. I'm calling human resources right now. I'm calling my mom. <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, hey, Mom. Hey, Mom, I have a question for you as the head of Human Resources. Okay. I'm watching an episode of Bar Rescue right now, and the manager just got in a physical fight with the rest of his staff and other employees outside the bar where he hit them. What should happen? They should sue him. Okay. What if it was a customer that he hit? They, would, they should sue him. He shouldn't hit anybody. What the hell did it, what, what was it about? I don't know. There was just a fight outside the bar, and they're going over it, and then he offered one of his other employees a $10 raise if he put that customer through a window. Oh my God, his business should be shut down. <laughs> Do you want to go to that bar, Ma? No, I don't want to go to that bar. Okay, I just wanted a human resources opinion because I've been screaming for about this, an hour and a half. This is not a human resources opinion. This is a human <laughs> opinion. Okay. How would you handle that firing? What would you say? In your, in your best human resources voice, fire someone. Yeah. I cannot fire an owner of a business. Mom, do it. Fire them. I'm not playing your game with you. So no, <laughs> because you cannot fire a business owner from his own business. So this is a so you can't fire them. So what is this a law thing? You would sue? Yeah, no. Everybody should sue him, and his business would get shut down. Okay. Yeah, if he was a manager. Then, as the owner, I would fire him. Okay. Okay. But he's the owner. You can't fire him. That's okay. Cool. Thank you. It has to be real. It has to be real for me to really step in. Okay. Okay. Thank you, mother. You are a huge help. So one thing we've learned is human resources ain't do shit. That's why bars don't have them. Do bars have human resources? I gotta say, at every bar I've ever worked at, I don't know if human resources was like existed. I gotta, I gotta be honest. This is technically a business for me, Mike Moldarik LLC. <laughs> so like, we don't got human resources here, bitch. How do you defend I'm sick of you yelling at my wife. Problem is, you guys think this is okay. You guys are a mess. I ain't scared of John. My tolerance for an owner hitting an employee is zero. You have no responsibility. You see, I have a reputation, and I have to protect it. And you will destroy it. That's what Lindsay Lohan said to me. <laughs> We are not those type of people. Then what did Things I say? happened that you saw, but that's not the normal that happens around here. The ultimate. It just happened to happen while we were filming the show when we should have been on our best behavior. Bullshit. That's like when someone cheats on you and tells you that it was the only time. Bullshit. Since I have been here, you guys have proven to me that you don't have the fundamentals to begin running this business and proved to me how irresponsible you are. So here's the deal. I'm leaving. I am not rescuing your bar. My advice to you is this, as another human being, you need some help.
You need to pull your lives together, and then maybe you can save your business. You need a counselor, not a bar professional. But yes, preach, preach the gospel. You fucked around and found out, bitch. This is the first bar rescue I ever walked out of. You blew it. I'm gone. Good night. In the ass. That's low, man. That's amazing. That's such bad bitch behavior. You thought you were wasting my time? Bitch, thank you for the TV show and the ratings. Go fuck yourself, I'm out. John Tafford, you got my respect on that shit. What do you guys think? Do you agree with why John Tafford walked out of all these situations? Or do you think that there's some of them that he should have stayed in? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe for future ones. I put them out every Tuesday and Thursday, but sometimes I'm late, just like your mom. A special thank you to everybody over on Patreon, especially the regulars and barflies who helped make this all possible. I've been lacking on the Patreon front trying to get used to a whole new schedule But I am trying to plan a whole new rollout for new fun things to do over there So thank you to everybody who's put up with me and stayed consistent. I appreciate you more than you know Special shout out to this person over on Twitter If you would like a special shout out in one of my videos be sure to retweet them when they come out If that's it guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike of GTV and you are fucking welcome. Bye-bye